So now we go to street art. And it's not to say graffiti isn't street art. Um, some graffiti artists don't like the word street art. They don't like the sort of idea that it is an evolution that's somehow above graffiti. It def definitely isn't, but it's, it's, I think it's two different types of things, whereas graffiti s tends to have a sort of dialogue between the writers. Um, street art's basically kind of coming more directly to the public. I think the dialogue tends to be directly with people uh, can see it. And there's less sort of internal dialogue. Uh, this is a friend of mine in New York, uh, Leon Reed. He, he grew up as a graffiti artist and then he kind of got into sculpture. Um, you know, obviously it's a social commentary on the whole CCTV thing and, you know, who you looking at kind of deal. Uh, this is a Banksy piece. Again, you know, another social commentary, which I think is nice. You know, the cop taking, taking the picture and stuff. Um, this was actually done a while ago. This is another guy I did a show with in Barcelona. And this was in Prague, I think, but they put out this big memorial to, uh, I don't know if it was World War II or what, but he went out in the middle of the night and painted it pink. And, you know, when you paint something pink like this, it kind of diffuses that whole sort of like, you know, militaristic sort of like uh, dignity that it's trying to project. And, you know, my city too, D.C., I mean, there's this scads of generals on horses and all that sort of stuff. And I don't, I don't dislike those, but just when there's so many, I think it kind of goes overboard. And, and the problem with a lot of these bronze sculptures, well, there's a couple of problems I have with them. Um, maybe even more than a couple. Um, one is that they kind of pull people in the past too much. And I think if you look at ads and stuff, they're updated with uh, frequency. They don't le usually leave an ad up for more than two or three weeks before they go over it with a new ad because people start to tune it out because it becomes familiar and then they don't notice it. And I think that's why now too, they start coming up with all these big jumbotrons so they can change up the ad content every 60 seconds. And you know, when you put a bronze out there like that, uh, it just gets tuned out pretty fast. This is another one I really like. <laughs> this is an, you know, another hack job. And, you know, while a lot of street art has, it's conceptual, it's a social commentary, a lot of it is more light-hearted and, you know, and this is kind of where street art kind of moves away from the fine art in the sense that it can just be, you know, funny as hell. And most street artists that I know, they're actually pretty funny people and don't take themselves or their art too seriously, myself included. This is a guy who calls himself Filthy Lucre. I haven't met him, but he works with inflatables and really creative imagination. And I think someone else actually improvised on this piece and uh, got some eyeballs that actually can kind of motion track. So. so now we get to my stuff. This isn't my stuff, but I figured, <laughs> I figured I'd start here. Um, you know, it's just kind of, I'm going to kind of explain street art and show you to me what is, you know, street art or, you know, whatever you want to call it, urban art or urban intervention versus conventional. You know, here we have people pushing a flag up. Um, it's on a sort of, you know, podium. Um, it's, it doesn't really integrate with the environment. You can't really see the environment. But, you know, I think the thing about sculpture and why I've always sort of, um, hated it to be honest and I don't really consider myself um, a sculptor so much as I do an installation artist and for me kind of I, I really don't even enjoy make, making sculpture to be honest it's, 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 it's a tedious process but I love playing with the works when they're done um, so I would never make something like this but I'd make something like this um, you know and it's, it's similar, I mean, you have sort of like a red, white, and blue flag um, where you have a baby pulling it down instead of pushing it up. But if we look at the differences between these pieces, you know, this is kind of integrating with the surrounding area. Um, 
A, like the buses in D.C. are always late and people are always pissed off. So, you know, you kind of get this, this kind of figure. And, you know, I mean, this is playful stuff, but, you know, you're integrating with, like, the environment and also you're playing off this pole that was bent already. So you kind of change something that looks broken into something that looks, you know, like action. This is another baby. <laughs> This is just kind of like how you can again like hijack billboards even by adding something small. You don't have to completely go over it and you can kind of repurpose it into some something else. Uh, this is kind of more into the conversion series. Um, this is sort of like a free parking day I made for DC and, and just kind of put some of these uh, live pop heads on parking meters and these are called meter pops. <laughs> you know, again, this is just like a dead phone stand near my house, and, you know, they hadn't pulled it out, and so... Uh, this stuff here, it's, it's less conceptual, but, I, you know, I started making these tape objects and uh, kind of worked my way through different things, and so... I like working in kind of dirty, gritty areas and areas that really are kind of charged for me and, you know, putting new pieces out there to kind of like just create this new environment. And so it's stuff like this or like this uh, or like this, you know, it's just kind of fun. And I think I was going through that, I guess, that happy, fuzzy phase before I turned dark and morbid. Um, <laughs> But, but yeah, and I think when I first started in street art too, I'm, I think I had a little bit more, um, I just kind of filling things out, especially in DC where there's a lot of, you know, concern about, you know, bombs and all that sort of stuff going off and people are kind of paranoid and, you know, this post 9-11 uh, fear of, of, you know, all these, what do you call them, Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda terrorists all that stuff. So maybe that's why I started out on the nice nice side too. And then there's other stuff I do to kind of try, try to take a break away from just working with tape and you know this is just cardboard painted green. You know and this kind of stuff goes over well. This thing rolls doesn't it? All right. Uh, and it's in a way sort of a thing that you know if I get in trouble I can be like well oh, hey I also gave you these Nice flower signs. Uh, it's just some more examples of kind of getting away from the tape stuff. But you can see it's it's usually the level of effort doesn't be doesn't have to be that high. And you know, there's a lot of stuff you can just whip up in a matter of minutes and, and chuck out there and it it works. So then we come to kind of the the tape, tape people. This is actually the project that I started with first. Um, I was living in Brazil at the time, and when I was a kid, I used to make casts of like my pencil in class out of tape. And um, you know, I was never much one for for drawing. And you know, and so I'd kind of figured this out as a kid and kind of forgot about it. But when I was living in Brazil, I met some uh, artists, and they were doing installations, indoor stuff. But um, stuff was like it wasn't bad, but. You know, I, I'd never taken art, but I looked at it and I was like, you know, I, I could probably do that. And, you know, I, I did music for a long time. And so I had like a lot of like, I don't know, just energy to do do stuff. Plus, I was teaching about five hours a week, uh, teaching English in, in Brazil. And I had a lot of time and um, I kind of gotten sick of going to the beach all the time, although it's not, not a bad life. So anyway, I started messing around with this tape. And started making body casts. Basically, it's self casting, at least when I first started. Now, you know, it's generally working with models. And this is probably the worst part of it is doing the head cast. And, you know, when you're doing yourself, I mean, you have to be careful. So it's a little, you know, a little <laughs> straw to make sure that I don't die. 